Hey guys, welcome to Science Appliance, where we apply the science. It feels so good to be back, I'll tell you that much. You know what else I love that's coming back? Five Nights at Freddy's. Who knew? I thought we got our climax back in FNAF 4. Four games, one story. Little crying child got bit during the Bite of 83, and with five other children gone missing, the only way to free their souls from the robots and finally get rid of the killer was to burn them all to ashes so that they could finally have their happiest day. But no, screw that, said Cawthon. He went on to make an RPG game, and then a few updates happened, including the cursed rainbow minigame, and the ending teased an animatronic we had never seen before. And after that, an entire book and a game came out, dropping the four games and one story. This was incredible because we got introduced to so many characters and everyone was trying to put everything together but it didn't work because sister location did not fit in at all we still had questions why is there a mangle in the sisters room? why is there a golden freddy plush sat here? why do we have purple eyes in the real ending but in the fake ending a guy from work stalks us? and before all of our questions were answered we got a pizzeria simulator game just kidding, this game is actually a horror game too. In fact, it was our worst nightmare, because it left us with so many questions, even though it was supposed to answer them all, which is then where Ultimate Custom Light came in, which we all thought wasn't canon until it was. Then MatPat came up with the mini theory that Scott made seven games to represent the seven knights. The first five were normal, the 6th was to tie loose ends, and the 7th was a custom night. So with all this in mind, we still have a lot in the future, one of them approaching in the next two weeks, FNAF VR Help Wanted. It makes me think, how will this relate to Matt's theory? But I don't think it will, and here's why. In all 7 games so far, we've played as a night guard. Whether it's a guard of a pizzeria, a horror attraction, or a bedroom, it's always been a night guard. However, we know that this new game is going to take us very close to the animatronics. We're going to be playing as a technician. Now this worries me because we all know what happened to the technicians during Sister Location. It's going to be a dangerous job while there's Remnant involved, but that's what will make this game so scary. From the trailers and gameplay alone, I've already picked out a lot and people may have already been through this on YouTube, but hey, I don't care. Firstly, I find out that the title of the game sounds awfully familiar, and that's because we've seen it before. The newspapers at the start of FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 have titles, Help Wanted. Now, this doesn't mean Scott is a time traveller or he predicted what he would do five years later, but I think he's titled this game very clever, clever, cleverly, clever, cleverly? I think he's titled this game very smartly. Oh, for goodness sake. It's also good to note that I have seen characters from every single game except for Pizzeria Simulator. I personally think this could work in a second VR game, or how about Ultimate Custom Night in virtual reality? Uh, anyway, I believe it's safe to think that this game is like a blanket, because here's the thing. In Manpat's timeline, his first rule was to use information from the later games However, now Scott is remaking the older games, so could that mean retconning? I know he'll change things, such as Phone Guy's dialogue, so that it will fit with Scott's latest version of the game. The one big thing I need to talk about in this game, however, is the sister location animatronics. Because although we have seen the animatronics, we haven't seen them in their usual location. Instead, we see them in the house in FNAF 4. Wait. Wait, what? How does that make any sense? Well, if you've kept up with the timeline, you'd know it makes perfect sense. We know due to the map connections and cameras that Sister Location's location is below the FNAF 4 house. William used the cameras to spy on Michael, whether or not his intentions were good or bad, so it does make sense that they are here. But at the same time, no it doesn't. Due to the fact we are able to fit in a cupboard, and that our height is the same as in FNAF 4, we know we must be playing as Michael again, but there's quite a large problem with Sister Location animatronics being here. At the end of Sister Location, 
all of the animatronics get scooped, whether or not you're going for the real or fake ending. This means in both endings, Ennard is formed. One day, Baby gets ejected and rebuilds herself into Scrap Baby, leaving Molten Freddy, so why do we see individual animatronics here? Put it this way. Ennard consists of four animatronics. Some of these animatronics make their way into the FNAF 4 house. However, we know this can't happen until all four of them are as one. So as in order for this to happen, they must not have been scooped in the first place. Which is impossible, as we defend against Ennard beforehand. Something to remember is that FNAF 4 occurs as a nightmare in hospital as a result of the Bite of 83, and sister location occurs a lot later, after William has taken all his victims. Between those two events, there's a period of time where what we are seeing in a FNAF VR could happen. The animatronics from below could come up to the house, but there's a very low likelihood that this could actually happen. The only other way it could happen is if this too was a dream. Now I know you're going to hate me, but hold your keyboards for just a second, because there's actually no way that it can be a dream either. They say dream theories are overpowered, but not this time. The reason why what we're seeing here cannot be a dream is because Michael has never seen the sister location animatronics before. Circus Baby, maybe, but definitely not the others. I'm telling you, at the moment there is a gap in our knowledge with FNAF 4 and sister location, which makes a lot of sense to me because they are the hardest to explain. Hopefully this game that is going to come out will help us with this small dilemma and tie loose ends in the timeline together, just like FNAF 6 tried to. And like I said before, it's going to be like a blanket over the other games, it's going to retcon the games so that we have information that's updated to a new timeline, so it's easier for us to make a timeline. Before we end this video, I want to ask, who is excited? I know I am, there's only a fortnight to go until it is officially released, but I want to know who is actually going to play it. Unfortunately I have no headset so it's a no from me, however I'll definitely be watching it on YouTube as soon as it comes out. Tell me guys what you are doing in the comments below, but unfortunately I have run out of time in this video so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another theory on this upcoming game.